Well, I had an absolutely incredible first week in Alberta. It was really nice to explore somewhere new and I was very pleased with how easy I could find just beautiful quiet places to camp and just have a nice time with Frank. I started back um, into BC instead of waiting till the morning, picked up pizza that looks so tasty I had a friend recommend to me and then just headed up a forestry road. I've never been here before but you know forestry roads there's usually a pull out and all I really want to do is just veg out in the shade and eat pizza and relax. Well, good morning. I'm just parked here on the side of a dirt road in a pullout, looking at a beautiful pile of dirt and greenery. Uh, it's really nice to have my bed here by the side doors because I do often just park and pull outs when I'm tired and traveling or whatever and it's more about just uh, crashing for the night than hanging out in camp. So, but I have had quite a slow morning because it's been so quiet here. Just trying to figure out what I want to do over the next couple days between here at the eastern edge of British Columbia and the western Kootenays and I've decided to take the scenic route through the mountains. The map does say it's a 4x4 road and I'm not a 4x4 but I'm gonna try anyways so um, yeah let's uh, pack up and hit the road and enjoy some nice stops along the way and uh, see if we can make it through that way. Quite a bit more of a challenge than I expected to find a place to go paddling on this lake. It's a really big lake. The first place I tried to go to was a boat launch, but it turns out it's a pay for use boat launch and I just wasn't down with that. So I've uh, set a course for this regional park nearby and Google Maps kept trying to send me down all these gated driveways and so I had to just forego Google Maps and like use my own sense of direction and common sense. And so I was almost at the regional park and I found a pullout that could access the lake uh, and there's an outhouse and everything. So uh, it's not busy. So <laughs> I just parked here and I'm just getting ready to go for a paddle and a swim. It's really hot today. So I don't want to be on the road in the middle of the day. It's like 1 p.m. and it's smoking hot. So Frank will be very happy to get on the water. And as you can hear, the pump is pretty loud. So I actually prefer to do it not at places full of people out of respect for them, although they don't seem to care about quietness because I avoid them because they're loud. So <laughs> either way, we're gonna be on the water soon. <laughs> Franklin, do you want to go for another swim?
Well, looks like I need to deal with that. All right, so I got my replacement bulb and I am now the proud owner of a torque tips thing. I don't know, it's hot. <laughs> Anyways, I'm very glad that the Canadian Tire here has this like shaded part by these trees and a little toxic creek because I'm sure it's just full of road runoff. Um, but yeah, Canadian Tire there. Um, and I'm pretty grateful they had the bulb. So I'm just gonna change it here in the shade and yeah, just not <laughs> arouse suspicion or anything. So yeah, thankfully I'm not the only one working on my vehicle in the parking lot. <laughs> This looked a little weird, but it's just got this plastic cover on. <laughs> oh boy. This is actually a really, really, really super easy repair thing. Um, and really cheap. This bulb was like $20. Uh, <laughs> and there are cars that it costs like $200. Her headlight to get fixed and you have to take it to a dealership it's nuts <laughs> people think they're saving money buying new cars because they don't have to repair it it's like no you don't have to repair it right away but when you do it costs way more and <laughs> you can't do it yourself in a parking lot in five minutes <laughs> like yeah new is not always better very nice <laughs> oh yeah. Cody. So I'm not even upset I had to replace the headlamp today because one, I was already planning to come to Canadian Tire to fill up some of my fluids. My oil's a little low and my coolant is a little low. Um, but the headlamp actually must have had like a micro crack or something because for the past couple months it's been fogged up with condensation so because it's a single sealed unit headlamp the whole thing needed to be replaced i couldn't just uh take out the bulb and dry it out so yeah it needed to happen anyways <laughs> and the reason it's too low is because the oil filter is a little loose so it's leaking otherwise the system's fine opening my coolant the engine is hot I'm putting it in the reservoir and it should in theory suck it in and I'll check it in the morning when it's cool and pop it up if I need to oh yeah um, I haven't been overheating or anything but it's just better safe than sorry and Feels really good to pour that without spilling and without a funnel. I actually used to work in uh, chemistry laboratories in analytical chemistry, analytical geochemistry. So I'm not as good as I used to be, but I'm quite skilled at pouring, especially dangerous liquids and concentrated acids and stuff like that. So I've learned sometimes the hard way. So I've just stopped at the grocery store to get some produce and some like smoothie juices for tonight and for the drive through the mountains on the scenic 4x4 road tomorrow. And I haven't been to a grocery store in quite a while that has a magazine section. And I'm so glad I remembered to check because I've been meaning to look in the latest edition of Backpacker Magazine because that's my photo from hiking on the PCT 
don't know if you can see, there's a little Frank and my friend Camel, who I hiked like a thousand miles with. I got a full page spread, so I'm very excited. I actually won a PCT Association um, a photo award for that, so I guess that's how Batpacker found it and they reached out to me to pay me to put it in the magazine. I'm so excited. So I bought myself like this really fancy vegan cheese uh, <laughs> I've never tried before to celebrate. So yeah, um, but it's like 8 o'clock at night and I don't know where I'm sleeping so I should probably figure that out <laughs> uh, it feels really good because um, primarily my passion is photography I've been practicing photography since I was like four or five so well over 30 years and um, yeah <laughs> it's just pretty cool to get paid for it <laughs> There you go. We're going to spend the night here, Frank. It's nice and warm and there's no bugs. It's actually a perfect summer evening. Nothing saying no overnight parking, so I'm just going to spend the night. And the thing is, you can pretty much stay anywhere you want. You can stay anywhere you want, except they might come ask you to leave. And if that happens, you just respond kindly and politely. You apologize and you move on. And it's not ideal to move in the night, it kinda sucks, but you're very unlikely to get a ticket unless you're a repeat offender or you're rude to them. And uh, I'm not either of those things, so. I absolutely love this open ponderosa forest, so nice, and I passed the sign about the road I'm going to drive tomorrow and it said high clearance. It is, it's only open for a few months in the summer because they, it's, they don't plow it, it snows, it's a high mountain road, um, but I'm high clearance and I'm a skilled driver. Hey Frank, I love you. Thanks for being such a good co-pilot. Uh, so it's, it's actually really warm out still. It's probably like close to 30 degrees Celsius. <laughs> It was quite warm and you know it's pretty much dark out so I have the doors wide open still. I'm loving the crickets but I'm having a bag salad. I had my pizza and I'm having a bag salad and yeah we're just gonna I'm just gonna hang out and do some work I guess until it's cool enough to sleep. So I'm pretty excited for this drive tomorrow. Uh, I guess I need to charge my lights now. Um, <laughs> okay good night. <laughs> Frank, you have to get up for pee-pees before we hit the road. We've talked about this before with your bladder health. I'm going to make you get up. Okay, then we're going to drive and we're going to go find somewhere cooler. Maybe go to a lake. Drive up into the mountains. It'll be a nice day. But you have to get out for pee-pees. Uh, roadside spring? Don't mind if I do. <laughs> oh. That is so good. <laughs> that is really good.
thought that was bear poop back on the road there, but it was definitely you three beautiful creatures. Hello. I hope you have a wonderful day. Stay safe on the road. Bye. Have a nice day. Again? Okay. This road really is not 4x4 four four at all. There's been nothing that needs 4x4. Four four. There's really nothing that really even needs high clearance. It's just a little bumpy. So I have pulled over here in the shade just to take a break from the jostling, but I recently crossed paths with uh, a lady in a, in a kind of a small car, and it was funny, and she was like, it's totally fine, and I was like, yeah, thanks, I wasn't worried. She goes, me neither. And then I get this like waft of skunk smell. Yeah, it's uh, just narrow. You just gotta watch out for other people and quite a bit of logging, which really detracts from the scenery, but that's probably why this road exists. That's why most back roads exist in British Columbia. So it's just the way it is. And um, yeah, it's just a nice drive. I've just been, you know, listening to music and singing and just thinking about some people in my past that I kind of miss, but yeah. I don't know, just cruising. So I am currently at 2,000 meters in elevation. <laughs> I've just come down from the pass, the highest point of this route, and uh, there's a lake and a wreck site, and there's nobody around, so I'm checking it out. There's a lake up here, Frank. You wanna go to the lake? Yeah. I think it looks pretty nice. I think we're just gonna spend the rest of the day and night here do the steep descent tomorrow. Uh, my only um, restriction is I wanna get to the post office tomorrow before it closes to pick up something very important. And yeah, so it's not that far once we get off this road. So gonna just, uh, yeah, slow down a bit, savor this. <laughs> Frank, that's rather big for me to throw for you. I think you need to find a more reasonable stick, Frank. Frank, that's a tree. 
Frank, I'm not throwing a tree for you. Frank, it's too big. I spent most of the afternoon hiding in the van from the flies, <laughs> um, and just like resting with Frank. They were pretty aggressive, but it seems like they've really calmed down. I heard from an old, old friend recently, and I went looking on my computer, on my hard drive, for photos of him, and uh, I found all this old footage, all this old video from... 2015 onward. And it was just such a trip to see. So it's actually put me in kind of a weird headspace, like looking back on some of my adventures and um, like times I remember so fondly. I remember them being like, like one summer in particular, like 2017. It's like one of my favorite summers. I climbed so many mountains with Frank, but I look at the footage and I was just completely exhausted and like at my wits end the entire time like we did so much dangerous stuff and I was always just like so lost in my own head it's just so weird to look back and to like to remember how I perceived myself then and now from a more mature standpoint to like look at this footage and go like Built to see like there was no reason for me to be so hard on myself yeah it's it's just kind of you know weird day it's just things that happen when you don't have anyone to talk to you or any internet to distract you and it's just you and yourself and yeah take a little dig into memory lane and it, it, it's pretty emotional but yeah it's been a it's been a long strange trip uh, these years of van life were have been a lot more than I even give myself credit for often, so. Uh, anyways, <laughs> I'm cutting up some potatoes, and I'm gonna fry potatoes, so. Yeah. <laughs> Well, good morning. Uh, the bugs have been pretty bad. I've been hiding inside since yesterday. I've made coffee. We're gonna hit the road. We're gonna do the rest of our drive today. <laughs> Get to the post office before four. So good news, I made it to the post office in time, and the thing I was picking up was a microphone for my new camera. So some of you guys have commented about the change in image quality, the really nice depth of field, 
And a few videos ago, I actually switched to a DSLR from my cell phone. I had used a DSLR for years with photography. The camera I had was horrible for filming. It wasn't intended for filming. So I bought one, a full frame camera that is a photography video hybrid. So I've been really enjoying taking photos again and really enjoying filming on it and editing with it. The image quality is so much better, especially in low light. As you can see in here, there's not all these dancing grainy things like there would always have been on my phone. So I'm really, really excited about that. And uh, it was made possible by patron support. So if you're a patron, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It means so much that you continue to support me there and be part of that community. And um, I do take a lot of the money I make there and put it back into making better videos and upgrading my equipment. So it's really nice. But in other news, shortly after returning from my trip to Alberta, life took a dramatic turn of events. And I am nowhere near where you expect me to be. So yeah, in the next video, <laughs> I'm going to be somewhere totally different than the Kootenays. So <laughs> yeah, um, more on that next week. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed watching. If you did, please give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you haven't already. I got some really fun stuff coming up to share with you. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful week. So yeah, thank you and we'll see you soon. Bye. Oh, I'm going to dig up a clip of Frank for you. That, that, that just can't go away. That has to happen every video. I will hear about that if I don't. So, okay, bye.